During the early 1970s, Montreal, Canada's largest city, was quickly becoming the place to be for young adults. It was a hot spot, a party town, with a pulsing nightlife and the epicentre of musical experimentation. People were there to have fun, and one of the best places for this was the up-and-coming Bluebird Café. The Bluebird Café was a popular two-storey nightlife complex which housed a thriving cocktail lounge on the first floor. Upstairs was the Wagon Wheel, a country and western bar which featured live music and was quickly becoming the place to be for country and western fans, as it was one of the only few places in the city that played this type of music. The Bluebird Café catered to a younger crowd, mostly from a working class background who enjoyed drinking, dancing and live music. On the evening of Friday, September the 1st, 1972, the Bluebird Café was packed full of 200 people who were drinking, singing and dancing the night away, celebrating the start of the Labor Day weekend. At around 10.45pm, whilst people were enjoying themselves upstairs, three young men, Gilles Eccles, James O'Brien and Jean-Marc, who had been day drinking and decided to join their friends at the wagon wheel, were refused entry to the upstairs bar as they appeared to be too intoxicated. This should have been the end of the story. The three men should have went home and that be it. This did not happen. The three men were furious about the rejection and wanted to teach the doorman a lesson. The men drove to a nearby gas station and filled a plastic container with gasoline. The plan was to start a small fire, empty the building and get the doorman fired. Jean-Marc and O'Brien decided to carry out their plan whilst Eccles remained in the car seat, allegedly passed out. The pair lit a small fire by pouring gasoline onto the stairwell leading up to the bar and ran. The stairwell was the only regular entrance and exit to the wagon wheel. The bar began to fill with smoke, seemingly out of nowhere. Within minutes, the entire bar was engulfed in flames. When people began to realise what was happening, they flocked to the exits in droves. But because the fire started in the wagon wheel's entrance, the exit was rendered useless. Those caught in the fire had no choice but to jump out of a window in the woman's bathroom, onto a car park 20 feet below, or to jump onto the fire escape from the bar's kitchen. One survivor stated, the railing on the fire escape had broken due to the large number of people on it. People were almost falling out of the sky. People were screaming, falling, being stepped on, and by the time I escaped, the whole building was up in flames. Another survivor who escaped out of the window said, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time when the fire was set. I was lucky to have the sense to follow other people who were going that way, but it was pure luck. More than 50 firefighters battled the blaze, with some suffering serious injuries from smoke inhalation. By 2.30am, the fire had been brought under control and was put out by the morning. Recovery operations began after the fire was extinguished. Bodies were discovered in the washrooms, huddled in corners and at the back section of the building. The fire claimed the lives of 37 people and injured 54 others. Emergency responders on the scene noted that the smoke was so thick that the skin of those who were rescued were completely black and covered in soot. The next day, Eccles was apprehended at his home. A manhunt would then be on for Jean-Marc and O'Brien, who had left the city but were arrested in Vancouver two weeks later. It was only by chance that they were caught after Vancouver police decided to investigate an unrelated call about drug trafficking, which led them to the house that they were discovered in. According to Jean-Marc, neither he nor the other two men intended to harm anyone, and he was guilty and heartbroken over the lives lost as a result of their actions. Him and O'Brien were found guilty of second-degree murder. Eccles was convicted of manslaughter, and all three were given life sentences, but were released ten years later. The incidents are little to no news coverage. Families who had lost loved ones were treated with even less sympathy and support. The families of the victims filed for a 9 million civil lawsuit against the Montreal Fire Department, the bar's owner and the building's owner, citing poor fire safety as a major cause of the deaths. However, the families only saw one to $3,000.
The families were disgusted. One of the mothers of one of the victims said, So, my daughter's life was only worth $1,000. Regulations were strengthened across Canada in the aftermath of the fire to provide more fire escape routes. The city of Montreal unveiled a memorial plaque to commemorate the 40th anniversary on August 31, 2012. While the Bluebird Café was a tragic event in Montreal's history, it deserves to be told and remembered for the sake of the families who are still grieving the loss of loved ones today. <laughs>